outside of GNOME and KDE, which offer a full desktop environment built in a framework that natively supports Wayland, X Wayland is basically the only reason that most people can effectively use Wayland. It's not even really fair to call X Wayland a compatibility layer. What X Wayland is, is basically an Xorg server managed by the Wayland compositor. So if you open up something that only works under Xorg, it will be spawned through that and then just seems to magically work. But when you run X Wayland, it can actually be run in two separate modes, but you probably only knew that one of them existed. So when you open up a foreign window, which is what the documentation refers to as an X11 application running through X Wayland, it can either be opened up in rootless mode or rootful mode. Now rootless mode is the mode that you've seen basically every time you've ever used it. So a rootless window operates in a fairly similar way to a native Wayland window, I can give you a bit of a diagram here. Basically what it's like is let's say we have this window here. This is a native Wayland window. This one is as well. And then I want to open up some other application. Let's say it's built in GTK2. Let's say it's built without a framework and just doesn't have Wayland support, but works perfectly fine over on Xorg. If I spawn it here, it will then look like it is a native Wayland window. So it has the same decorations. It can move around the same way basically what you'd expect from a regular window. Let's say, for example, I open up something like Xterm. Xterm only works on Xorg, but if you didn't know it was running through X Wayland, it looks like a regular window. No matter what else I open up, like a browser or anything else, it's going to basically operate in the same way, doing all the same sort of window management, everything else. But it does come with a major disadvantage. So when there are fundamental differences between Xorg and Wayland, it is going to prevent some features from actually working or must be re-implemented in some way with Wayland in mind. Things like, say, desktop capture, for example, or global shortcuts, while applications that require these will open, they won't be able to work in the same sort of way because those APIs don't exist in a compatible way with most Wayland compositors. Now, for most of the sane use cases, rootless windows do exactly what you need. But let's say you want to go and run a full X11 environment, let's say a desktop environment or a window manager through X Wayland. Well, a rootless window isn't really going to make much sense. So if you have a rootless window, and let's say you want to go and open up this and have it be BSPWM, well, the entire thing in here is all going to be that window manager, and it can't actually manage any of those windows. So what you can do instead, let's say we have all of these native and rootless windows, and we have this rootful window. So a rootful window is going to make a container in the Wayland compositor itself. But what makes it different is you can actually have windows spawning inside of that window. As an example, we can do something like this. Now, when you run X Wayland directly, it's going to accept all of the regular options that an Xorg server is going to accept. The options right now aren't really that important. All that matters is it opens up this really weird looking window. So what is this window? Well, let's go and open up another terminal window and let's run another command. So display equals colon 12, and let's open up something like Xterm, for example. It opens up Xterm inside of this window. So what this window is, is a rootful X Wayland window, and this is a full X11 session that we can do whatever we want with. As an example, we can do something like this. Now, when you run X Wayland directly, it's going to accept all of the regular options that an Xorg server is going to accept. The options right now aren't really that important. All that matters is it opens up this really weird looking window. So what is this window? Well, let's go and open up another terminal window and let's run another command. So display equals colon 12 and let's open up something like Xterm, for example. It opens up Xterm inside of this window. So what this window is, is a rootful X Wayland window. And this is a full X11 session that we can do whatever we want with. Think of it like a virtual display or a window into another system. And inside of this virtual display, you can do basically everything you'd expect to be able to do in that X11 session, barring things that just don't make any sense inside of Wayland. Things like GPU configuration, mouse acceleration, mainly hardware related stuff. 
it should be obvious, but this has a pretty big disadvantage. It doesn't integrate whatsoever into your native Wayland environment. Now, the reason why the background looks so weird isn't because this is how it has to look. You can run, you know, i3, BSPWM, GNOME even, and go and set a custom wallpaper and make it look, you know, like a regular X11 session is going to look. The reason why it looks like this is because I spawn X Wayland without passing in the options to start up one of those environments, so it's using the default right now. And the default looks like it's straight out of 1970, but that's how Xorg basically always looks. Now, recently some changes were actually made to the Rootful experience to make it much, much better. But before we get to that, let's talk about why you might, you know, want to use this in the first place. Because as it looks right now, it doesn't really seem to have much of a purpose. So if you've ever had to go and install Xorg yourself, you would know that you require two sets of GPU drivers. You require your X11 drivers, and then the other GPU drivers. Generally, this is Mesa, but if you're NVIDIA, then your NVIDIA requires something separate. The reason why it's like this is because Xorg is an ancient project based on another ancient project, and it was built at a time where it made sense to have separate 2D and 3D drivers. So you have separate 2D and 3D drivers. But Wayland and Wayland compositors, you know, being built this century, don't have this problem. Because nowadays we want to do 2D things, we realize that 2D is just 3D, but without depth. So it's much simpler, and you only need one set of drivers. This is the same set of logic as dropping native OpenGL and doing everything through Vulkan through a system known as Zinc. So basically you are emulating, maybe not emulating is the best term, translating into the OpenGL calls. So it looks like a transparent interface to everything that expects OpenGL, but it's all being done through this one system. Also, the preservation of X11 environments, especially in cases where they're one, abandoned, or two, don't really make any sense to migrate over to Wayland. Things like window managers, for example, like BSPWM, DWM, i3, and things like that. Now, I know in those three particular cases, there are replacements that exist over on the Wayland side built on WL roots, but a replacement is not the same thing. And by allowing people to use, you know, their old environment, but now on a Wayland context, it would allow more people to actually effectively use Wayland. Because here's the really dumb idea that you could do. You could have a really lightweight compositor, even lighter than something like Sway, for example, and I'm sure that as time goes on, things like this are going to exist, but for now, Sway is good enough. Have a really lightweight compositor, and then dedicate an entire screen just to the X11 environment, and if you want to, don't ever leave that environment. So effectively, you're just using X11, on top of Wayland. And there is a really cool advantage you get from that. So if you don't know, screen lockers on Xorg aren't real. They're, they're just kind of a joke. They're an application that covers your screen, but if you kill the application, you can just do everything you want on the graphical environment. That's not the way a screen locker should work. Windows does a vastly better job. By that, I mean it crashes the system when the screen locker dies, but it doesn't let you get into the system. On the Wayland side, though, the screen lockers are built into the compositor, so if the screen locker dies, it should bring everything else down around it. Before someone calls me out for this, I know that bad screen lockers exist on Wayland as well, but the screen lockers built into things like GNOME and KDE, things like that, those are actually good screen lockers. So effectively, your whole Wayland environment is a glorified screen locker. And this is what I mean by a really lightweight environment. Once this gets better, I wouldn't be surprised if a compositor comes around to do exactly this. It's as light as possible, and effectively its only purpose is to have the screen spawn and lock the screen. And that's all it does. So as for those improvements that were made, here is basically what happened. Firstly, a new command line option, dash geometry, to set the size when running rootful was added. Basically, you can set the size you want the window to be. Also, a new command line option, dash host grab, to disable keyboard shortcuts and confine the pointer on the host so that x can receive all the keyboard events. Basically, like you'd have for something like VirtualBox, where it locks your keyboard and your mouse into that window. And then Control shift is going to let you take it out of that environment. I think Control shift is a really bad option, because I use Control shift for a lot of my modifiers. 
I hope at some point that can be changed with an option though. And a final option is a full screen option. This will let you run the x and Rootful window in full screen. Couple that with Geometry and Host Grab, this allows you to run a full X11 desktop in x on a dedicated monitor, and even cooler, with X random modes emulated, including resolutions higher than the actual output resolution. So you can run it on a dedicated monitor, and then also upscale it if you want to, which I think is really cool. But there's one thing that can make it even better. So I run multiple monitors, and right now the most you can do is have it spawn on one monitor and then pass that into the X11 environment. You can go and like change the resolution and things like that. Now that's totally fine. I guess technically you could have it stretch across multiple, but what I would like to see is have it pass in basically virtual displays into the X11 environment and then have it stretch across multiple screens. So I can have it on two separate screens and then inside of the X11 environment, it would think there are actually two separate screens. That would be very cool. There were also some minor changes made to make the container sort of better integrate with your desktop, making sure that decorations are spawning properly, making sure the compositor can actually close the window, which, couldn't easily do before unless you actively went and killed X Wayland. So that's something to be dealt with as well. But it's not major changes. The options there are much more important. Now there's one last use case I didn't mention because it's absolutely cursed. So if you don't know, over on WSL, when you spawn a graphical window, it spawns it through Wayland and lets it render on Windows. So you could theoretically run an X11 environment on WSL, have it spawn through X Wayland through Wayland, and then have it be a effectively a native window, a native container on Windows. You shouldn't do it, but I think it's technically possible. Now, while Wayland itself may not be a drop-in replacement for Xorg, as rootful windows get better and better, X Wayland might actually be a drop and replacement, or better yet, allow you to just keep using your same environments and keep working the same way you're working anyway. I'm not sure on the performance loss you're going to get from running this stuff through X Wayland, but I think it's worth at least experimenting with. So let me know what you think. Did you know about Rootful Windows, or are you one of the people who have actually been using them and seeing what they're actually capable of? I would love to know. So if you like this video, maybe go and like the video. If you really like the video and you want to become one of these amazing people over here, go check out my Patreon, subscribe to the Pay link in the description down below. I've got a podcast called Tech Over T. I've got a gaming channel called Brody Robertson Plays. That's going to be it for me, and I'm out. Now to find the stop button because we don't have global shortcuts yet.